guys! Welcome back. We're going to be learning about the Qin Dynasty today. Um, when you hear the word Qin, what do you think? Right. Qin. But this isn't the same. This is Qin. Q-I-N. What language would that be? What do you think? That's about it. China. Okay. Um, the the, um, we're going to be learning about another one of the dynasties in China. Now, we've already learned about one dynasty. Remember, we learned about the Shang dynasty? And what was one of our takeaways from the Shang dynasty? The silkworm, right? We also learned about Confucius and the um, people who um, followed the Confucius faith. They worship their ancestors. Okay, so we already know some things about China. Um, the Qin Dynasty was formed when Shi Wang Di. Say that with me. Shi Wang Di. Um, he used to be known as Qin. He united all the feuding states. What does it mean to feud? It means to fight between each other. So he united all of them um, into one dynasty. Sounds like somebody we just recently learned about. Who united a bunch of fighting lands together? Alexander the Great, right? So, Shi Wang Di um, united a bunch of the feuding states into one dynasty. Um, Shi Wang Di means the first emperor of China. Um, so he gave himself that name. Because when you're the emperor, you can do pretty much whatever you want. So some of the really great things that he did... Um, he had canals built. Um, do you know what a canal is? Canals are man-made, and they are built to um, move water where you want it to go. Um, and so a canal was built um, to better water crops. Um, he created one type of money. Can you imagine, like, if we took our money to different countries, we have to exchange it. But all of these feuding states had had their own form of money. And so he gave everybody the same kind of money. So you were able to trade with the people who lived in the village down the road instead of only being able to do it with your people. And it made the, the money have um, an equal value. Um, he instituted one standard way of measuring things. Because if, like, we measure it by a foot. Well, if you measure my foot, it is not as big as my husband's foot. I wear a size 6. My husband wears a size 13. Now, there's a pretty big difference there. In fact, you can put one of my shoes inside of my husband's shoe. Um, so he made it so that one foot, or what they called it, um, was equal for everyone. Um, and he also instituted the same thing with weighing things. So when we measure things in the United States, we do pounds, we do inches and feet um, and yards. And so he did the same thing. They had... Um, an equal way to measure things. Um, he also standardized the size of chariots and wagons. So some wagons weren't this big and some were this big. Um, I would imagine it made building roads much easier if you knew what size you were building for. If you think about it, like when you have to get stuck behind a wide load truck with a big sign on it and you have to get way over to get around, it made it easier for them to make those choices. But he also did some pretty awful things, some hard things. Um, he had really, really high taxes. It was really hard for um, the people that he served. And he persecuted people who had different beliefs than him, particularly the followers of Confucius. Um, in fact, he executed more than 400 scholars, and many of those were people who followed the teachings of Confucius. Remember what did Confucius teach? Lots of things, but respect for your elders and worshiping your ancestors. Um, he burned thousands of history books. I guess that's one way to rewrite history, right? I mean, it's not like they had the internet where it's stored. So history is written down in books. And back then, it wasn't really common for people to have books. They didn't have printing presses like we do, and so they didn't have hundreds of books in their house. And so he burnt books to rewrite history. Now, could we do that now? I mean, they could work on it, but I would imagine people would hide their books um, and people wouldn't turn them over. So it would be a really hard thing to do. You definitely couldn't change history, too. 
Because if we burn books, we still have the internet. Um, we still have documents on our computers saved. Um, so he boasted that his dynasty was going to last 10,000 years. Do you know how many it lasted? He was a little off. It only lasted 15 years. Um, and another thing that he did that was a huge thing that is still standing today was he connected the village walls. So all of these little um, villages in China had built big walls around themselves to try to protect them because of course they were always fighting with their neighbors. Um, and so he connected all of the walls of those small villages to make the Great Wall of China. Now, I drew this and it's a little bit backwards for you, but I want you to look. So the wall was 25 feet. So the dash is like the base of the wall behind us. Okay, so think that's backwards. So the base of the wall was 25 feet. Now, just for the sake of measuring, let's pretend like I'm five feet, which I'm five feet too, and I deserve every inch of that. But let's pretend like I'm only five feet tall. If you laid me down with my head on top of my feet five times, that would be how thick the wall was at the bottom. That's pretty thick, right? That's pretty impressive. So then the wall itself was 25 feet high. So it's just as tall as it is high. And then he has little towers every 200 to 300 yards. Now, a yard is three feet. So 200 three times is 200, 400, 600 feet or 300 yards, which would be 300, 600, 900 feet. So every 600 feet to every 900 feet, he had these big towers. What did they do on top of the towers? They were lookouts, okay, and they could see. So the towers were 35 to 40 feet tall. So how many of me would that be? Count. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, or 40. So seven or eight of me standing on my head, okay? It was 35 to 40 feet tall towers every 600 to 900 feet. Wow. Okay, and then the top of the wall was 15 feet thick. I mean 15 feet. So it's 25 feet at the bottom and 15 feet at the top. Now, do you know how long this wall was? The wall is 1,500 feet. So from Bedford, Virginia to Tampa, Florida. Now that's a 12 hour drive. From Bedford to Tampa, it's 750 miles. Okay, what is 750 times two? 750 plus 750 is 1,500 miles. So the wall of China, the great, because it really was great, the great wall of China was as far as from here to Tampa, Florida, a 12 hour drive and back again. So it's a 24 hour drive on the highway. That is incredible. That is a pretty neat accomplishment that Shi Wangdi had. So how did he build this wall? He used soldiers, he used prisoners, and he used peasants. What were peasants? Do you remember? Not pheasants, not the bird. Peasants, the poor people. The people who didn't have other choices. The people who couldn't pay someone to do it for them. He used the um, soldiers, prisoners, and peasants to build it. Thousands of people died while building it. But you know what? Shi Wangdi didn't care. He didn't have any value for people. He just wanted what he wanted, and he wanted it the way he wanted it. In fact, if a man left a crack in the wall thick enough for a nail to get in, he was killed on the spot. Talk about expecting perfection. I mean, it's not like they had, like, fancy tools that could cut rocks perfectly like we do now. And so they had to fit the rocks in perfectly. And if they left a crack big enough for a nail, they were executed. Now, Shi Wangdi is well known for his tomb because they discovered it in 1974. 1974 is only 46 years ago. 46 years ago. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Sorry. <laughs> um, about 46 years ago, his tomb was uncovered. 
He was buried with 7,500 life-size clay soldiers. Why? Well, did you know that emperors used to bury themselves with live soldiers? Because they believed that they would protect them in the afterlife. He also buried himself with replicas of chariots, horses, and weapons that were life-size. This must have been an enormous tomb. The soldiers were actually a really good sign. They were a good sign that they were no longer burying live men with the emperor. Can you imagine being one of the men selected for that one? Oh yeah, I get to go be buried with the emperor. What an honor. No. All right, I can't wait to see you next time. We're going to talk about Hannibal, the elephants, and the Punic Wars. And let me tell you, they are fascinating. I cannot believe the crazy things that Hannibal did, and I can't wait to share them with you. I will see you next time.